Grace and peace to you, and God bless you. I want to share a dream that I had um, early this morning, and um, it just totally encouraged me, like, after I woke up and just started seeking the Lord for the interpretation of the dream, I felt, it's kind, it's kind of hard, to, I just felt wells of joy leaping in my soul, like, on the way to work, I was just, you know, I had was trying so hard not to mess up my makeup, but I could not hold back the tears of of appreciation and thanksgiving unto the Lord for what he was revealing to me. So scripture say in Proverbs chapter three, verse six, in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Now, a couple of, I would say for the last several months, um, the Lord had been just kind of prompting me to um, go back to school because there was a door he was opening for me and I needed uh, credentials to get through that door. And so my wrestle with the Lord was, Lord, I'm, and I'm just going to be vulnerable and I'm going to be transparent with you guys. I said, Lord, I'm tired of going to school. <laughs> I'm an educator, but I'm tired of going to school. I've got, I don't know, four degrees and um, I've got my doctorate in theology and I've got an undergrad in social work. And, and I said, God, I said, I'm just, I'm tired of going to school. But for what he was showing me, he he knew that I, even, listen, even though he opened the door, there were credentials I needed to get through the door. And I want somebody to hear me because many times the Lord speaks to us or he releases a word prophetically to us through another of his servants. And, you know, we, we pack up bags and we're ready to go. And I think sometimes we fail to realize that for certain doors, there has to be certain credentials or certain connections or certain arrangements that need to be made. Um, for example, and I ministered this past um, oh, I don't know. I ministered about King David and about how um, God anointed him to be king of Israel. Even though he was anointed king, he still needed Samuel to walk him through that door. And so there are certain things or people or experiences that we will need to get through certain doors, even though that's what God is saying. And so as, as prophets, we have to be very mindful um, and as prophetic people, we have to be very um, cognizant of the fact that even though God said there are conditions that go along with what God said. And so my one of my favorite words, if you've been listening to me for any period of time, I always talk about alignments. So even though earth, earth excuse me, heaven has has ordained what should be on earth, right on earth as it is in heaven, um, and understanding that heaven is eternity, right? Earth is not, right? And 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 so understanding that for what we want to see that God has already said, earth has to align. And that's just in anything, people of God. And we can't change it. It doesn't matter your pedigree. It doesn't matter, you know, if you come from a family of covenant preachers like me. If you are, you know, who your pedigree, your background. I mean, I'm connected to strong apostles. But they're... With all of that, right, God still holds you responsible for um, complying with certain of his assignments. And so with this one, I was, I've lied to you not. I was wrestling with it. I said, God, I don't, I just don't want to go back to school. I don't. And, but he would not release me from it. And I mean, I'm, it, it, it was just, it just tore me up because I knew that's what God wanted me to do. And I just didn't want to do it. And and if you ever said that you leap and run to every assignment God gives you, you know, come on, be real. There are some certain assignments that I'm like, God, I don't want to do that. I just don't want to do it. And he would not relent. And so finally, you guys, I yielded and I said, okay, well, Lord, where do you want me to go? And so I ended up <clears throat> connected with um, the university that I'm that I'm attending and and so there was anxiety with that how am I going to do you know this all of that the same thing I gave God the same business Moses gave him just like a, a lot of questions right and God is saying I'm going to go with you you're going to be okay you're going to get through it so started class right and did wonderful and I'm like wow God thank you that wasn't as bad as I thought it was and I know I'm just starting out and I'm rambling but just just hear me where I'm going with this but last early last night, early this morning, I had a dream. And in this dream, I'm sitting in class, and I'm at the front row. There were other people on the front row with me, okay? Um, you know, we got to be careful not to single ourselves. I like, we're just so special. <laughs> but there were other people seated on the front row with me, but I was seated on the front row. 
And this woman walked out and she she was so graceful and so elegant and so poised and polished. Like she was just the epitome of everything um, excellent. And I was mesmerized by her, like just her, the way she walked, the way she stood, like everything about her was mesmerizing. Like she totally captured my full attention. And and I'm just like glaring at her, right? Just admiring and, and just, just I'm, I'm just taking it all in. And she opened her mouth and she looked at me and she said, tell me about your last college experience. And I said, I loved it. I, I you know, and I just kind of went on and, and I said how I love my discussions and I loved writing. And, and she looked at me and she said, so why do you think this will be different? And I just got silent. I did not have an answer. And she looked at me, and again, these were there were other people seated in the room, but her focus at that time was on me. And she looked at me and she said, you're going to do well. She said, I'm going with you. She said, we'll walk through this together. And, I, you know, I went into another dream and that's something personal. But anyway, I woke up and I said, God, what in the world? What was that? And he's told me, he said, that is wisdom. That was wisdom. And so God was showing me, you know how the Bible talks about the, how the Lord will go before us, right? And he'll make the crooked path straight. And, 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 you know, he'll be our rear guard. So he's not only going before us, but he's also coming up the rear. And he was showing me, he said, daughter, I've already gone before you. I've already given you what you need. Why? Because this assignment is so critical for you. And, and I'm, I'm at work, y'all. I'm trying to gather myself because I'm still so messed up. So I come to work this morning and I check my emails. And without going into a lot of details, I received an email that my position was guaranteed. Listen, as a condition that I complete this program. And so think about it. Here it is. I'm wrestling with the Lord. And I'm telling God, I don't want to do this. I, I just, I'm, t- I'm tired. I've got what, five degrees? Uh, I, why do I have to get another one? And, you know, why do you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm giving him that Moses thing. I'm, I just don't want to do this. And he's telling me, I'm not going to back up from this because I've opened a door for you, but you're going to have to carry a certain paper to get through that door. And you're going to have to have certain connections and you're going to have to have certain experiential knowledge. Yeah, academic lettering, but you're going to also need some experiential knowledge. And so I'm going to place you in places and I'm going to surround you with people so that you can receive impartations for this next season. People of God, I want to share something with you. I love the work of the kingdom. What the Lord has shown me in this, he showed me this uh, last year. I heard him say transformational, transform pulpit. And I said, God, what in the world does that mean? And so I see now it's unfolding. That many of us who are apostles, I don't know about any other faithful, but I can speak to apostles because I'm seeing this in, with some of my colleagues as well um, in, that serve in the same vocation, the same call. I'm seeing God shift them. And it's not that we've abandoned the work in the building. But what I'm seeing with my fellow, some of my fellow apostles that I'm in covenant with, and, and we all talking and, and like we were wrestling like this is new. I've never experienced this before. I'm I'm not even sure, you know, what I'm doing. Like this is something new. And and I'm seeing it now. God said transform pulpit. And so for the apostles, God has shifted many of us to uh to the mountains, to the to the cultures in the earth. And and so not only are we legislating and and establishing rule and and uh uh managing graces amen uh in the kingdom but also in the earth realm remember as it is in, on earth as it is in heaven and so there are some apostles that are God is shifting them into different dimensions and 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 I'm telling you <laughs> I, I I wouldn't call some of their names but we've had conversation and we were like Man, I just don't know about so. And I'm like, I don't know either, sis. I don't know, bro. And God is doing it. Like this is so amazing. It's exciting. Um, there is some anxiety with it because these are realms that many of us have never touched down on before. Now God has been speaking it, but it's like when you finally see it happen, and there's this excitement. And 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 so this is where I am, and I'm just sharing this with you because I feel like. There are some of you, those of you who are apostles, I know you, I know you felt the check in your spirit. Like, yep, that's me. God says shift, uh, shift. And I'm like, wait, God, you mean I can't do it like this anymore? I've got to do it and do that. Like, okay, how is that going to happen? And I'm telling you, God is going to redeem the time. Or here's what God is doing with me. He's raising up leaders. 
that will help stand and help man the house. He's raising up and God is even sending and God has been, that word has been coming to me for months. I'm sending help. I'm sending help. And I'm seeing folks show up and they're like, what can I do? What do you need me to do to my email? What do you need me to do? And, and so God is helping to relieve the burden, right? And undo that heavy yoke. And so when I tell you, this is such a, um, it's such an exciting journey, but I want to encourage you that even though you may have been prophesied that, you know, God is changing seasons and doors are opening and opening. And that's wonderful. Be excited. Give God glory and praise because he's worthy. But I don't want you to be naive to the fact that there will be more required of you. OK, and so I don't want you to go through kind of what I went through. I mean, I'm just crying and fighting with God. And of course, you know, you can't win. Right. <laughs> like You don't win. And I'm just like, God, change your mind, please. I'm I, really. Are you serious? And he was like, yeah, I need you to lay this down. I need you to lay it down and pick this up. And so I will tell you, even as a serial serial entrepreneur, I found that there are some businesses that sustained me in a certain season. And God said, I never intended that to be your full river. That was a creek. Or, you know what I'm saying? That was that was uh, a stream. And so you've got to know the difference. And I know I kind of shifted a little bit. That's the prophet in me. But you've got to know the difference when the brook dries up, right? And so sometimes God will allow, for me, I've seen it, um, you know, my T-shirt business. I don't have, I, I actually gave it to my son and his, um, for his girlfriend. And my publishing, I'm, you know, giving that away because now God has taken me into another dimension, right? And so there was a season when the t-shirt business sustained me. There was a season when the publishing sustained me. And I will always be a t-shirt printer, a screen printer. I will, you know, just because I have relinquished those businesses doesn't mean that I lost the gift. Come on, somebody. I can still do it, right? Um, But that's not where God has me right now. And so you've got to be able to, because I've seen some people struggle when the brook dries up. And I know I kind of went right into another message, but just follow me. Praise God. Um, I've seen people struggle with letting go of certain things. Some of us have a hard time letting go. And I'm telling you, until for some things, and this may not be for everybody, but for some of you, until you let go of what you have been depending on, you'll never be able to fully experience what God has for you in this season. OK, and so just be mindful of that. That brook dried up for me. Another brook dried up for me. And I'm like, OK, God, bet. Where are we going? What's next? Right. And so be confident in the God who calls you and be confident in the God who ordains seasons for you. Even if it looks like a season where God has got you at a brook and you're living, excuse me, he moves you from the brook to a widow. Like you literally have to count, you know, your 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 supplies, you know, but. God is God even in that, okay? So two things I want you to take away from this little short talk today. Number one, when you acknowledge the Lord, he will direct your path. Even though it looks like it's something challenging, it looks overwhelming, it looks like it's just, it's going to require too much from you, God has you. If it's what, now listen, now, if you just step out into something on your own, have mercy. But I'm telling you, if it's something that God is calling you to, even though it may look like, Lord, I don't know how, I, I mean, it just may look overwhelming. It may look impossible. I'm a living witness. God will step in that thing with you. He will walk you through it. He will give you the help that you need. He will give you the, the resources. And that's a whole nother testimony. That's another testimony. I needed $25,000. And I said, and I had already given them my credit card. And, you know, I'm like, okay, God, I'm just going to go ahead and give them my card and let them go ahead and draft it, you know, every month or what have you. And the Lord was like, no, I, I'm i calling you to this. I'm going to finance it. And when I tell you, I knocked on the door, the door shut, right? And the very, within 24 hours, the people called back and said, you know what? You're covered. Don't even worry about it. I could, I, I was, I'm not going to say I couldn't believe it. I can. But I, I just said, wow, God, nothing out of my pocket. Do you hear me? Nothing out of my pocket for this next season that God has called me to. And so even some things that he's calling you to, and there may be cost associated with it, he's going to foot that bill. He's going to provide. He's going to send in financiers. And they're going to, listen, and these may be, and I prophesied to my church that people are going to come in and they're going to give you stuff. And you won't know these people from a can of paint. 
but they're on assignment to be a blessing to you so that you can get. Listen, there is work out here in the vineyard. Jesus said it. The harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. He said, pray the Lord of the harvest that he'll send labors into the vineyard. We apostles, if you're listening to me, we are the chief laborers. If you don't want to work, <laughs> ask God to confirm your call because you cannot be an apostle. And not want to labor. And laboring doesn't mean sitting up in church telling people what God said. God said laboring means being the first example. Jesus Christ, the firstborn of the dead. You know what I'm saying? You have to be the first example. And don't worry about the shiftings and the shaking. Because you want to see when you enter into seasons like that, listen. You want to see some things happening, but you better not be moved. The Lord told Peter, Peter said, bid me come. Jesus said, come. And as long as Peter kept his eyes, apostles, as long as the apostles keep their eyes on the chief apostle, it doesn't matter the whirlwind. It doesn't matter who's sitting in the boat watching you. It doesn't matter who refuses to support you. That All of that is irrelevant. You keep your eyes on Jesus and you're going to be more than okay. You're going to be more than a conqueror. So I bless you with the word today, Proverbs 3, amen, and and 5 through 7, one of my favorite scriptures, trust in the Lord with all your heart, even when you don't understand it, even when it doesn't make sense, even when you don't want to do it. Let's just be real. Some of these assignments, I'm like, God, no, I didn't listen. (laughs) I am obedient to God. I didn't say I'm not going to do it. I just told him I wasn't going to do it. You know, I'm like, no, I'm not going to do it. But I knew I was going to do it. I just didn't want to, right? Because I have to be honest. There are some things I don't want to do, right? And we can't, we, we just have to be honest with God in prayer. Lord, this is hard. This is a season right now. I'm walking through the valley of the shadow of death, but I know you're with me. I don't want to walk through this valley. Even Jesus said, Lord, let this cup pass. So there, there's nothing wrong with articulating fears, concerns, apprehensions. You can say it, but at the end of the day, nevertheless, Right? I'm going to do what you call me to do. I may not like it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You may have to check my attitude the whole way through the season, but I'm going to do it. Right? So trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean to your own understanding. Some of this is not going to make sense. Trust me when I tell you it's not going to make sense to you initially. But continue to seek the Lord. Acknowledge him in all of your ways, and he will direct you. So tuition is paid. My position is guaranteed and wisdom is walking with me, people of God. I could just burst in tears again. To God be the glory. Follow the marvelous things that he has done. God bless you.